Well, hey everybody, welcome to Celebrate Recovery. My name is Johnny, I'm a believer who struggles with alcoholism and codependency. Hey, I just wanna say, before we get started tonight, I am so glad you're here tonight. And I know the leaders are as well. No matter where you are in your recovery, whether it's your first night here or you've been coming for a long time, we're just glad you're together with us. My favorite thing about Celebrate Recovery is that we can get together no matter what our issues are, no matter what our background is, no matter what's gone on in our lives, and we can get together and put God at the center and find change and healing in our lives. Tonight, I wanna kinda take a time out from how we normally do things. Normally, we do an acrostic and we talk about a particular principle or a step of recovery, and I think that's the way that we always wanna do things, but tonight, I just kinda wanna take a break. I just wanna kinda pause and review and just kinda relax. I just wanna stop and think back about what God has done for us and also help us make sure that we move forward, that we're not getting hung up or stuck. Now, some of you, like I just said, may be here for the very first time. You've just begun the journey through the principles. Others are somewhere in the middle, and some of you may have gone through it a couple of times. It doesn't really matter where you are. Anyone can get off track and stuck in recovery. So tonight, we're gonna talk about the seven different reasons or things that can happen to us that cause us to get stuck in recovery. And here's what I know. None of us wanna be stuck. None of us wanna be frozen in a particular place and time in our recovery. We want to move forward. So let's look at these seven different things that can happen in our lives to keep us stuck or derailed in recovery. The first one is a big one. You have not completely worked the previous principle. Sometimes we come to recovery and we wanna just fly through, especially principles one, two, and three. We wanna be like, yep, I know, I'm in denial, done. Also, I know that uh, God exists, great, there, done. Okay, I'm gonna trust Jesus, done. And you just wanna move on through those principles. Or later on in recovery, you get to the point where you're doing your inventory and you write down the people who you've hurt and it's like, great, let's go ahead and make those amends. Let's get this through. God is moving, let's just go. I want you to slow down. Just slow down. Give God the time to work. Just moving forward isn't isn't always progress. I mean, just wildly moving, you could just be moving towards a disaster. You might be going fast, but it's not progress. Think about a time where you've seen a car where the brakes go out. Yeah, that car is moving, but it's headed toward a catastrophe. So remember that this program is a process. It's not a race. So I wanna make sure that we, we complete the principle in order, that we do the first one before we do the second one and on and on and on. Galatians 5.25 says, since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. We need to be led by God, allow His perfect timing to move us forward. So take your time with each principle. Work it to the best of your ability. And remember that many people get lost while they're trying to find an easier route than just following the way that it's been laid out. The second thing that can keep us stuck is maybe you have not completely surrendered your life and your will to Jesus Christ. Remember, there's there's two parts to principle three. The first is to ask Jesus Christ into your heart as your higher power, your Lord and your Savior. We We completely turn over our life to Him. The second is to ask Him for His will in our lives, we seek his will. Maybe you're trusting Jesus with the big things, but you've decided to handle the small things. And so I wanna encourage you to turn your whole life over to Jesus, that's the one time decision. And then day by day, sometimes minute by minute, turn your will over to him. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us, for good judgment and common sense, trust in the Lord completely. Don't ever trust in yourself. In everything you do, put God first and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. So what part of your life are you still holding on to? What areas are you holding back from God? What don't you trust him with? Some of us are great at trusting him with the big things, but we hold on to the details. Others of us trust him with the details, but we don't trust him with the big things. So we wanna make sure we completely turn our life and our will over to Christ. What's another thing that can keep us stuck? Well, one might be that you have not accepted Jesus' work on the cross for your forgiveness. You might have forgiven other people, but you feel like your sin is just too big to be forgiven. First John 1, 9 tells us, if we confess our sins to him, he can be depended on to forgive us and cleanse us from every wrong. Look at that, every wrong. 
Not just some of our wrongs, but all of them. Believe me, your sin isn't that special. It isn't that different. If you've been in recovery for a long time, you start to realize a lot of us who feel so isolated and alone because of the things that we've done, we're pretty in tune with other people. There's not that much difference between all of us. Ephesians 1, 7 says, so overflowing is his kindness towards us that he took away all our sins through the blood of his son by whom we are saved. Remember, it's all of our sins. We like to say that some sins are worse than others, but God says, I paid for all of them already. So the real question here is, have you forgiven yourself? This is one of the main places I see people get stuck in their recoveries. Have you forgiven yourself? This is what God wants to do with the darkness of your past in Isaiah 1.18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And remember Romans 8.1, therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Another thing that might keep us stuck is that maybe you haven't forgiven others who have harmed you. You and I have to let go of the pain of the past, the harm and the abuse that's happened to us until we can, until we can release it and forgive it, it's going to continue to hold us stuck. We've talked about forgiveness, you've heard about forgiveness and forgiveness is hard, but forgiveness is the key that unlocks the door of resentment. It helps us break out of what's kept us stuck for so long. I'll tell you this, if you were a child when you were hurt and you've been unable to forgive the person that hurts you, not to say it's okay, not to say that they don't deserve some kind of justice that's outside of what you can provide for them, but just to say, I'm not going to hold on to it anymore. You stay stuck as that child. If you want to grow and mature in your recovery and in God's promises for us, we have to forgive those who have hurt us. It's not easy, but it's what sets us free. It's not about them at all. It's about us. 1 Peter 5, 10 through 11 says, after you have suffered a little while, our God, who is full of kindness through Christ, will give you his eternal glory. He personally will pick you up and set you firmly in place and make you stronger than ever. God will do this for us. So do you know that you may need to ask forgiveness for blaming God? You might have to ask God to forgive you for blaming him for what others have done to you. There's God's will and there's the devil's will and your free will at work on the earth. And remember that sometimes people did to you. It was from their free will, not from God's will. But if you and I wanna move forward in our recovery, we have to forgive others who have harmed us. Another thing that will keep us stuck is that you might be afraid to risk in making the necessary change. You might be afraid to take the risk in making the necessary change. It might be fair to say tonight that there's some people here who have put off change and procrastinated for as long as they can. They've known what they need to do, but they just haven't done it. There can be a lot of reasons for this. First, you may be paralyzed to fear the future. You might look forward and you might think, I don't know what will happen if I do this. I don't know what will happen if I decide to follow Jesus. What will I be like? Who will I be if I don't have this? Remember that falling down doesn't make us a failure. It's staying down that does. So this is where we have to put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ into play. We have to trust that he will be there for us in the future. Another reason that you might not be able to take the risk is you might fear intimacy because of the fear of rejection or you fear being hurt again why it's really important for us to move slowly in our relationships. We want to take time to seek God's will, develop realistic expectations, and establish po proper boundaries. One way we can do that is here, making safe, healthy relationships. You might also res resist change or growth because of the fear of the unknown. You might look, my, my, my life is a mess. Everything's out of, con out of control, but at least I know what it is. At least I can look at my mess and go, that's my mess. If I really apply the principles to my mess, it will change and then I'm afraid because I don't know what that will be. So some people never let God change them because they're more comfortable in their pain. But I wanna encourage you that 
God is with you. That although you might feel alone and you might feel afraid, God says in Isaiah 41.10, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my victorious right hand. And in Hebrews 13.6, we can say without any doubt or fear, the Lord is my helper and I am not afraid of anything that mere man can do to me. Another thing that keeps us stuck is that you're not willing to own your responsibility. This will keep us stuck. Now, none of us is responsible for all of the things that have happened to us. We can't look back at our lives and say, all of that is my fault. But we are responsible for some of the ways that we react to them. Remember, in the case of someone who's been abused, there is no way the victim is at fault or responsible for that. And in fact, step eight of our sexual, physical, emotional abuse for our 12 steps reads this way. Made a list of all persons who have harmed us and became willing to seek God's help in forgiving our perpetrators as well as forgiving ourselves. Realize that we have also harmed others and become willing to make amends to them all. Now, my kids are not responsible for being the child of a recovering alcoholic, but they're responsible for their own actions. They're not responsible for how I act, but they're responsible for how they act. We need to do our parts in a broken relationship, in damaged friendships, or in a relationship with a distant child or parent. Psalm 139.23 says, Examine me, O God, and know my mind. Test me and discover if there's any evil in me and guide me in the everlasting way. When we can accept our responsibility, we grow. We keep moving forward. Another thing that gets us stuck is that you maybe haven't developed an effective support team. You're still trying to do it on your own. Let me ask you a question. Do you have a sponsor or accountability partners? Do you have phone numbers of other people in your small group? Do you use those phone numbers? Have you committed to volunteer in, in Celebrate Recovery? There are so many ways to get started. You could be accountability partners with someone else. You could be a greeter. You could be a sponsor. You can serve at events. You can just show up and help out. You can set up or tear down. There's so many ways but we have to get started. We have to have people around us. Get started with uh, this, this group of people. Ask people into your life to hold you accountable and to hold you up when you need encouragement. Proverbs 13, 20 says, be with wise men and become wise. Be with evil men and become evil. Galatians 5, 13 says, dear brothers, you have been given freedom, not freedom to do wrong, but freedom to love and serve each other. And later in Galatians verse six, or chapter six, verse two, it says, share each other's troubles and problems and so obey our Lord's commands. Remember, the roots of happiness grow deepest when we serve. I wanna encourage you to look at these seven areas, to look at any of them. And as I was going through, if you went, yes, that's, that's me, that's where I'm stuck, I haven't done this, to not allow it to keep you stuck, but to move forward. We need to keep moving forward. Because somewhere along the road to recovery, we're going to visit each one of these. All of us will, I have, and so will you. So we need to take time this week to reflect on our progress. If you're stuck, talk to your sponsor, accountability partners, or your small group leader. Talk to somebody about it. Find out which of the reasons you're stuck up, you're stuck on, and move forward. And there's, a, there's another thing that you can do. You can look at Celebrate Recovery's Daily Action Plan for Serenity. This is found in Participant Guides number four. And if you have those guides, you can go through it. If not, you can see it here. Celebrate Recovery's Daily Action Plan for Serenity. First, daily continue to take an inventory. When you're wrong, promptly admit it. Two, daily study and pray, asking for God to guide you and help you apply his teachings and his will in your life. The third thing to do is to daily work and live the principles to the best of your ability, always looking for new opportunities to help and serve others, not just at recovery meetings, but in all areas of your life. If you do these things, if you, if you apply this daily action plan for serenity to your life, you will find amazing growth and change in your life. If you see that you're stuck at one of these seven areas, do something about it. Don't allow yourself to stay there. Trust Jesus, trust each other, and watch what God's getting ready to do in your life. Let's pray together. Father God, we thank you that you've given us this progress, this road to follow. But sometimes, God, we can get stuck on that road. 
And so God, tonight, if we're somebody who looks and we say, yes, I've been stuck at the same place for so long, or I've been coming and coming and coming and nothing is changing in my life. If one of these seven things has jumped out at us, would you help us take action on it? Help us to talk to one another about it. Help us to ask you for help about it. Help us to reach out and change what's going on in our lives. God, we love you. We thank you that you've brought us here. Help us keep moving down the road to recovery. It's your name we pray, amen.